This is Chris Winker. I'm a GIS epidemiologist at the New Mexico Department of Health. This is a training video for the IBIS community of practice. I will introduce the leaflet web map application that we use in IBIS, and then I will describe the GeoJSON files that form the layers in the web map. Follow-up videos will dive into the actual process of creating a GeoJSON file. This video just serves to introduce the file structure and to point you in the right direction. IBIS developers use the leaflet application to embed the interactive maps in the indicator reports and query results. Leaflet is an open source, lightweight JavaScript library that supports both vector and raster GIS map layers. Here we see a vector layer of the state's boundaries over a raster background map. Raster layers store data pixel by pixel. For our purposes, raster layers only come into play as the background map layers. Vector GIS layers can represent discrete points, or lines, and polygons, like these states, where the data is stored as individual corner nodes that are connected by line segments. Vector layers, like points, lines, and polygons, need to be kept separated. By this I mean that if you wish to create a map with three feature types, cities as points, rivers as lines, and county boundaries as polygons, you will need three separate vector files for those feature types. Additional map layers of other feature types will then also need to be added as their own separate point, line, or polygon files. For the vector files on IBIS, we are using the GeoJSON file type. GeoJSON files are really just geographically enabled versions of JSON files, JavaScript object notation files, which are lightweight text files for data interchange. Here's a look at how the text of a GeoJSON is structured. A single geographic point which, for example, could represent a healthcare facility, is simply stored as a latitude-longitude coordinate, and other attribute fields, such as name, address, bed account, can then be appended to this record. Likewise, the GeoJSON text that makes up line and polygon vector files consists of linked strings of latitude-longitude coordinate points that are all linked together to form a single object in the file. So let's turn to the big question. How do I create a GeoJSON file to use in my IBIS deployment? Well, let's take a look at a GeoJSON. Here I'm using the text editor Notepad++, and we're looking at a real-life GeoJSON of home visiting programs in New Mexico. Each line is a separate facility, a separate point on the map. Because these are simply text files, a new GeoJSON could theoretically be created from scratch in a text editor but that looks pretty daunting, and we would have to be sure to structure the document correctly. I'm not recommending this approach to create a new file, but I think that it's useful for us to know that it, an existing GeoJSON could be edited this way if you need to make small changes. Instead, our approach is to acquire a GIS file in a different format and then transform it into a GeoJSON. Probably the most commonly available type of GIS vector file is the shapefile. These are a proprietary ESRI format, but they've become something of an industry standard. They are widely available, and they can be opened and edited, edited with a variety of non-ESRI software and apps. Shapefiles are usually the type of file that are provided by GIS data warehouses. The GIS products from the U.S. Census are provided as shapefiles. Other data clearinghouses also provide shapefiles. Here is the central data webpage for Montana and here is New Jersey. Most state and local governments host GIS data centers where you can obtain shapefiles. Okay, so now you've downloaded the shapefile, and what's next? Well, let's not get too far ahead. If you haven't used shapefiles before, there's a cautionary point that I should mention. The odds are that your shapefile was provided as a zip file. When you unpack that zip in a directory and view it in Windows Explorer, you will see at least four files, all with the same name, but with different extensions. There may even be five, six, or eight separate files in a zipped shapefile. Only four of these files are actually necessary to form a complete shapefile. Those are the files with the extensions SHP, SHX, PRJ, and DBF. To compare and contrast, if we view this same folder using Esri's ARC catalog, which is like Windows Explorer but just for GIS data, we see that just a single shapefile is displayed. ARC catalog recognizes that all the essential components of the shapefile are present, and so instead it just shows us the icon for a single file. 
the very important thing to note here is that it is essential to keep all of the shapefiles constituent subfiles together in the same folder. If they are separated, then the shapefile will be broken. So now you own a shapefile and you're ready to transform it into a GeoJSON. From here, the workflow will differ depending on which GIS software you have available. If you are using Esri's ArcGIS desktop software, we have a video about creating GeoJSON files using ArcMap. If you are using the free open source QGIS software, we have a video for creating GeoJSON files using QGIS. At the New Mexico Department of Health, we've been using QGIS to create GeoJSONs fairly regularly now, and this workflow allows good control over the final content and the properties of the GeoJSON. And because it's open source, QGIS is also in line with the spirit of IBIS. If you're starting completely without any GIS software, we recommend starting with QGIS. The next two videos in this series will demonstrate the workflow in both QGIS and in ArcMap to create a basic GeoJSON from an existing shapefile. Later videos will discuss the finer points of finessing the GeoJSON attributes and the file size to maximize their web performance. We hope that this introductory video about IBIS mapping has been instructive. Please check out the other videos in the IBIS Community of Practice YouTube channel.